Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today I'm going to attempt to do the May leaderboard challenge here at twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard. So as always, I'm gonna try to create this uh, tutorial style so that you uh, will be more likely to be able to complete this challenge. So here I am at twotalltoby.com slash leaderboard. You can see that there are many entries from last month, but no entry so far for May. I'm gonna click on this area here in the middle of the screen, which shows me these three images here on IMGUR. And we are going to attempt to create these three models as quickly as we can. Ow. All right, so I'm going to start off by taking this uh, IMG UR page, moving it over to my second monitor so that I can keep an eye on it over there on my second monitor. And then I'm going to go down here to where it says compete, and that will bring up the clock. And the first rule of this leaderboard challenge is that the clock needs to be visible throughout the duration of the uh, challenge. So let's just make sure that we have that clock visible. It's looking good, and I'm ready to begin. So here we go. I'm going to start. And I'm going to say new, and I'm going to create a new document here in millimeters because this first challenge is in millimeters. Now, anytime I look at a challenge like this, I always like to think to myself, you know, how am I going to start out with this model? I think that this model does have symmetry, so I'm probably going to draw it from the center. And I think that I'll probably start by creating this shape here, kind of over, down, up, over, like so. And then I will round off this front section of the model using a full round. Then I can maybe add in the C bore, and then I'll finish off by adding this section here in the rear. And I'll probably just do that all as one sketch um, and just kind of add that whole like horseshoe shape in the rear. So that's my general game plan. Always good to come up with a game plan before you get started. Let's see if we can implement the game plan in SolidWorks now. So here I'm gonna go to the front plane, begin a sketch, and I'm gonna start out by sketching a line that comes over here to a distance of 100 plus the 40 millimeter radius. I'm gonna create a line that comes down from that at a distance of 21. Create a line that comes back in this direction. This will be at a distance of uh, 140 minus 65. And then I'll be able to create a line that comes down here and finish off by closing up that sketch. So using the auto dimensions to fully define your sketches as you're going through, another great time saver whenever you're creating models in SolidWorks or really any parametric CAD system that has auto dimensioning. Uh, now I'm gonna turn that into an extrusion and I'm gonna say that's gonna go out to a depth of 80. So it's at 40 millimeters times two and that's gonna be mid plane. And I'll hit the green check mark and there we go. That is our first feature in the model. Now our second feature in the model is gonna be a fillet. I'm gonna use this fourth option here, the full round fillet option. And I'll pick this face, right mouse button, this face, right mouse button, this face, right mouse button and finish off that full round fillet then i'll jump into a hole wizard hole and this is going to be a counter bore for the hole type and then i'm going to use the um, cut show custom sizing option down here and that way i can just dump in the dimensions right from the drawing so 20 through press tab 40 press tab 10 press tab go over here to positions and then i can click on this planar face and drop that counter bore right at the center of that hole right mouse button to finish that command and that takes care of those two features and now i'm on to my third and probably the final feature of this model so select a plane begin a sketch orient my view and i'm going to create some geometry that looks something like this i'm going to come up with a line i will uh take that line up to a height of 45. come across with the line here right to the middle i'll come down here at a distance of uh 15. Come across this way and then down and then close off that sketch. Let's take this line of the sketch and make it for construction. And then we can take this entire sketch and mirror it. And now let's create a width dimension here with a width of 10 and then some fillet dimensions. So this fillet here is going to have a radius of 20. And this second fillet here is going to have a radius of 20 as well whoops Let's see here. there we go and then i'm going to create a fillet with a radius of five and that's going to be here and here and after i create all those see i'm running into a sketch error although having the fillet on both ends should have resolved that Okay, there we go. 
Um, once I, it was an over defined because I didn't need the 20 dimension on this side. A little bit of a misstep there. I probably should have added the fillets first and then mirrored the sketch. Uh, if I could go back in time and do it again, that's what I would do. But uh, that gets us to what we need for that, that feature. And that's going to come out to a depth of 30. And I'm going to reverse the direction on that one, hit the green check mark. I'm going to right mouse button and assign the appropriate material. So the material for this one is supposed to be 1060 alloy. And then I am going to mass properties this thing. So evaluate mass properties. And I come up with a mass of 861 grams. And that is the correct mass. And so I'm ready to say finished with model one, ready to move on to model number two. Let me scroll down here to model number two. And once I get to model number two, we can see that we, we are looking for a mass of 1781 in this one. I think with this one, I'll probably start out by creating this shape, the 60 millimeters and just bringing it up to the 100. And I'll leave it solid on the inside. I'll save this 30 through uh, probably for the end of the model, because if it's solid on the inside, then I can create this geometry here. And I don't have to worry about accidentally protruding into that inner wall of the model. This is a little trick that's good to know about when you've got a cylinder that's hollow on the inside. Maybe save that hollowing out feature for the end of the model. So similarly, I can create this shape here. And I don't really have to worry about, you know, overlapping the inside. In fact, I could probably create that shape all the way from the center center line of the original extrusion. Um, and that's like I said, it's just going to save me a little bit of um, concern with regards to kind of uh, uh, protruding into the cent the inside of that geometry. And then I'll finish off here with this kind of uh, funky stepped hole. Maybe I'll do this as a cut revolve or maybe I'll do it as a, you know, a series of uh, cut extrudes. But either way, I'll create this kind of final hole here. You know, maybe something like that as a cut revolve and that should take care of that model so not too many features in these models this month but uh you know definitely gives you a chance to practice some of your fundamentals so this is once again going to be in millimeters this time the material is plain carbon steel i'll just go ahead and assign it right away top plane begin a sketch and i'm going to create a sketch of a circle with a diameter of 60 that gets extruded up to a height of 100. so i know these dimensions already because you know i i already kind of thought about what my game plan was this is the value of just taking a little bit of time to think about your game plan you don't want to take too long obviously but uh it's good to kind of have a basic game plan and then this is going to come up to 12 and then this is going to come up at an angle say an angle like so like i said i mean because i don't have this thing hollowed out in the middle it really frees me up to define some of this geometry like this 60 millimeters here oh look that's going to be perfect do an extrusion there that's going to be to a depth of 10 and that's going to be a right mouse button mid plane right mouse button to finish off that feature that looks good let's go front plane again begin a sketch like we talked about in the basic game plan we could actually start this sketch right from here right from the top of that original extrusion come over to a distance of 50. We can come back, touch that endpoint, come around with our radius here of, uh, this is gonna be a radius of 15 because it's 30 total. And then we can close off that shape and uh, that pretty much fully defines that sketch. Now we're ready to take that and turn it into an extrusion. Now what we could also do here is we could create our smallest of the three holes here right in the same sketch. It looks like that smallest hole is six millimeters. So we could create this right in that same sketch and maybe save ourselves a little bit of time. Uh, this is going to have a max width of 40 and that's going to be mid plane as well. And then what I could do is go to this top surface here, uh, get normal two, create a circle with a diameter of 30 and then create a rectangle here uh, with a distance here of say, well, the width is going to be 10. Then the distance here could be like 80, something a little bit extra to stick over the end there, make that midpoint. And then I could uh, do a trim command and I could trim away this kind of extra geometry trim like so. And then I could uh, turn that into a cut extrude through wall. You know what? I don't really need to trim. I don't want that sketch to go under defined. So I think what I'll do is I'll just leave that sketch like so. And then I'll do my cut extrude and I'll just say pick these contours. So here's the contours that I want to cut extrude. And that's going to go through all. And there we go. This thing is looking pretty darn good. Select this face, begin a sketch, orient the view, and I can create the larger of the counterbore diameters here. That's going to be a diameter of uh, 20, and it's going to get cut extruded to a depth of 5. And there we go. And then I can create the smaller, uh, well, it's the bottom hole for the, the counterbore. It's smaller than that 6 millimeter hole to 10 millimeter hole. Then that could go up to next. So just kind of uh, 
taking advantage of having that six millimeter circle embedded in the original sketch. I think that looks pretty good. I'm doing the final spin here and I think it looks pretty much like what we see on the print. So let's go into our mass properties here and we get 1789 for the mass and boom, that is correct as well. And so that means that we can stop the clock on that one and we can move on to our third and final model. Now this model is in inches and is looking for the answer in pounds. So I know what you're thinking there, yuck. We don't want uh, we don't want inches and we don't want pounds, but that's what we're dealing with here for this model. So I think that for this model, what I'll probably do is just start out with a square rectangle, extrude that up to one inch, and then I will uh, create the corner uh, fillet on that thing that I can create. I think what I'm going to do very similar to the last example is I'm going to create this shape here as a solid um, and extrude that up to one inch as well. So one inch for the uh, original height, that's a one inch there, and then one more inch to get up to that circular uh, boss up at the top. And then that'll free me up. I don't think I'm gonna need to protrude into this. I think I can get away with just using ribs, but just in case something goes a little bit sideways, I will uh, have that freedom to protrude into that original model. And then I can finish up with my final uh, cut extrude feature at the end after those ribs are done. So that's kind of my game plan for this one. Let's see what happens. Let's go new. I'm gonna create a part in inches here. Uh, this material is ABS, so it's a plastic part. And I'm gonna start out by going to top plane here, begin a sketch, orient my view. And I'm gonna create a sketch here with a distance of 4.5 by six inches, 4.5 by six inches. And we're gonna extrude that up to a height of one inch. Now I'm gonna jump into my fillet command and I'm gonna create a regular constant radius fillet with a uh, radius here of 0 0.75. And that's gonna be on this one single edge. And then I'll just pick this icon here to get all four of those edges that are connected at that top surface. Now I'm gonna pick this face and I'm gonna create my circle with the diameter of 2.75. And that is also going to come up to one inch. And now I'm going to go to my right plane, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm going to create that kind of angled geometry. Now, there's a couple of ways we could do this. One way is we could create a line that comes across here, uh, all the way across, and then comes down on the other side. The other way is we could just create a single line, and that's going to be the method that I use. This is the rib technique, and I really like the rib command in 3D CAD. Um, it's in several different CAD packages, and it is very useful if you learn how to use it, because with the rib command, what SolidWorks will do is kind of extrude up to next in both directions. So it'll go up to next going down to the base, but it'll also go up to next to kind of close off this gap here, and that is very useful. So these ribs are at a distance of 0.25 for wall thickness, and there you can see it filled in that gap in both directions. Yes, 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 I really like that. And so now I could maybe go uh, front plane, mirror, and then just mirror that rib across. And now I'm gonna go to the front plane to sketch, and I'll get normal too. And for my sketch here, this one's gonna be a little bit more of an angle. I think this one is at 30 degrees. So we'll go 30 degrees here. And we're going to say that that is going to be at a distance of, these are called out from max to max. So this is 5.5 over 2 for the distance to the location of that rib. And now once again, I'm going to jump into the rib command and I'm going to create this rib like so. And then I'll go to the right plane and I'll choose mirror and I'll choose this uh, rib feature to mirror. So this thing is looking pretty good. Uh, I think that at this point I'm ready to go to my uh, inner diameter there, do my cut extrude through all. And there we go. We'll do our kind of final spin on that one. I think of the three, that was the easiest, although it is kind of a pain to have your system set up to work in inches and pounds. But let's go to evaluate here, mass properties. And for this one, we do need to show the mass in the designated precision. So it's currently showing at 0.98. Well, it needs to show in 0.978. Uh, 0.98 would have a tolerance that would take me to 0.979, which would be incorrect, and I would fail uh, to get my video validated. So we need to make sure that we go to options and show it in the correct precision, which is 0 0.978. And that is correct. That is what we were looking for. So let's click here to finish with model number three. And boom, there we go. My total time is 13 minutes and one second. So we'll say too tall Toby for the name. We'll say SolidWorks 2015 for the uh, for the uh, uh, CAD system. And when we click submit to leaderboard, we see that it processes for a moment. And here we go. 
Yes, indeed, the very first person, although it looks like actually Juiced was able to get on here first and completely smoked my time. So this is very impressive and uh, I'm interested to see his video. Um, he's always impressive when he does these runs. So we'll look forward to seeing the Juiced video here. Uh, did model one in 52 seconds, model two in 51, model three in 43 seconds. So very impressive Juiced. We'll take a look, we'll see uh, what he comes up with uh, for his run here using Anta Space Claim. But uh, for my run, 13 minutes is not bad under five minutes for each model i'm very happy with that and uh, let's see how well you do on your run i'm sure that you will do very well as well um, what i'm going to do now is i'm going to process this video i'm going to post a link to it on youtube i'm going to send that link to myself uh, well really what i'm going to do is i'm going to record my run and i'm going to reply to this video the synthwave video and uh and then I'll, I'll drop in my link in that synthwave video and then i'll be able to have my video show up here and my video will get verified and that way i will be eligible for the prize in May. We're gonna do an actual prize this month, not just a t-shirt, uh, but an actual prize. And so I'm very excited to see how that all turns out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and be sure to come back for the next one. Good luck everybody in the May Leaderboard Challenge.